Today I'm going to show you how to create a level manager like this using only code. What's up guys? In my last video I showed you how to swipe between panels, but I really never showed you how to create those panels in the first place. And I thought it was important to have a script that manages your levels and manages pages. So in this video I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. But we're going to cover a lot of code, so let's just jump into Unity and let's get started. Right now I have a scene set up with a background panel and a title at the top with the word levels. The important thing to know is that I already have a canvas set up on the scene. If you don't have this already, just right click and select UI and then Canvas. This should create an event system object for you also, but if you don't have that, you can add it manually by right clicking again and selecting UI and then Event System. The next we want to create a button inside our canvas by right clicking and selecting UI and then Button. For this example, I'm going to use the Text Mesh Pro button because it's nicer, but feel free to use any button here. And then I'm going to quickly decorate this button to look more like an icon. Feel free to decorate your button any way you'd like. The size and dimensions don't necessarily matter because our script will calculate the perfect dimensions based on this icon. Then once you have this icon the way you like it, go ahead and drag your icon into the project window to make a prefab of it and then delete it from your scene. Next we want to create a placeholder UI panel. This will tell our script how we want to position our pages. So go ahead and right click and select UI and then panel. Then go ahead and drag the corners of this to position it where you'd like. The only important thing to note here is that the width should be at 100%. If you make your page less than 100%, the pages will bleed through and it won't swipe as clean. And now that we have our panel placeholder set up and our icon prefab created, we can start coding. We have a lot of code to cover today, so before we begin, I want to remind you that you can copy and paste the source code shown in this video from our website, pressstart.vip. Okay, let's get started. Let's go ahead and create a C Sharp script called Level Selector and let's just attach it to our camera object and open it in the editor. The first thing we want to do is create a few references at the top. For the first one, let's create a public game object for our panel, but let's call this Level Holder. And then let's create another public game object for our icon prefab and let's call this Level Icon. And then let's create a public integer to store the amount of levels we want to populate. So let's write public int number of levels and for now I'm going to put the default value as 50. Then in our start function, we want to calculate how many icons we can fit in a page and then divide that by our total amount of icons to figure out how many panels we need to create. So first, let's get the dimensions of our panel placeholder object by writing rect panel dimensions equals level holder dot get component and then put rect transform and then dot rect. Then right below it, let's do the same thing for our icon prefab by writing icon dimensions equals level icon dot get component rect transform and then dot rect. Next, we want to see how many icons we could fit in a row before they exceed the width of our panel. So let's write int max in a row equals panel dimensions dot width divided by icon dimensions dot width. But we want to round this number down so that we don't have any icons overflowing the edge. So let's wrap this equation by mathf dot floor. And then let's add two int and then also convert this float to an integer. And then let's do the same thing to calculate how many icons are needed to fill a column. So let's write int max in a call equals int, and in parentheses, let's put panel dimensions.height divided by icon dimensions.height. Then to calculate how many icons fit in a page, we can just multiply the two numbers. So let's write int amount per page equals max in a row times max in a column. Then lastly, to calculate how many panels we need to create, we just need to divide the total number of levels by the amount of icons on a page. So let's write int total pages equals number of levels divided by amount per page. But we also want to make sure this number always rounds up so that we don't forget to include our last page. So let's wrap this equation in a mathf.seal to int. And there's one last problem we need to fix. Because number of levels and amount per page are both integers, when we divide the two numbers, some rounding already occurs before we are able to use mathf.seal. So in order to fix that, we need to convert our numbers to a float first before we divide. We can do this easily by writing float in parentheses right before number of levels. Now that we have the value for our number of levels, we could pass this along to a function called load panels and let's place total pages in parentheses. Load panels is a function that we are about to create that will handle the creation and spacing of our pages. So right below our start function, let's write void load panels and for a parameter, let's put int number of panels, which is basically the same thing as saying total pages. And just for now, let's output to our console how many pages our script plans on creating by writing debug.log and then put number of panels in parentheses. So then if we go back into Unity, let's drag our objects into their appropriate places in the inspector. 
Firstly, let's put our panel placeholder in the location of level holder. Then let's drag our icon prefab into level icon and press play. If done correctly, we should see a number here in the console. For me, I see the number two, which indicates that my script wants to create two pages, but I have no idea if this number is correct or not. What we want to do next is keep cloning our panel objects so that we have enough pages to fill all of our level icons. Then we want to place our level icons on these pages using script. And then we want to duplicate this icon so there's enough icons to fill the page. And to space these icons out evenly, we can use Unity's built-in layout component called Grid Layout Group. We could easily do this manually, but I like creating solutions that can be done automatically regardless of whether we have 20 icons or 200 icons. So let's go back in our script and set this up. Then the first thing we want to do is create a clone of our panel placeholder to use as a model for future pages. So let's write game object panel clone equals instantiate and then put level holder in parentheses and then put as game object. And with that set up, we can now create our pages. So let's write for int i equals one. I is less than equal to number of panels and then I plus plus. And then let's create a panel for each page that we need by writing game object panel equals instantiate and then put panel clone in parentheses and then put as game object. Next, we want to make this panel a child object of our level holder object. So let's write panel dot transform dot set parent and put level holder dot transform in parentheses. Now for whatever reason, whenever you use instantiate with a UI element, it resets all of our dimensions for that clone. You can see what I mean if you go back into Unity and press play. Notice how my two child clones look nothing like its parent clone. The only way I've been able to fix this problem is by first setting the clone's parent to the canvas and then making a child object of the level holder. But in order to do that, we need a reference for our canvas object. So up at the top, let's create a new public game object called this canvas. Then right before we set the parent object, let's write panel.transform.setParent and then in parentheses put this canvas.transform and then for a second parameter put false to tell the script that we want to use the local orientation instead of the world position. Now if we go back into Unity and drag our canvas into the inspector and press play, we should see two child panels that have the same dimensions as its parent. Now back in our script, let's assign each of these clones a name by writing panel.name equals page and then do plus and the letter I. This just keeps us organized. Next, let's space out each of these panels so they appear one after another. We can do that by writing panel.getComponent, rec transform, and then dot local position. Then let's set this equal to a new vector two and for the X parameter put panel dimensions dot width times, and then in parentheses put I minus one. Then just put zero for the Y parameter. In our start function, we calculated our panel dimensions already. So let's just go ahead and make this a global variable by deleting the word rect in front of it and then up at the top, let's put private rec panel dimensions. And then let's just delete our panel clone by writing destroy and then put panel clone in parentheses. Make sure to place this outside of our for loop. Now we just need to create a function to load all of our icons on these pages. So right below our load panels function, let's write void load icons. And we're going to want to create two parameters here. And for the first one, let's put int number of icons. And for the second, let's just put game object parent object. Then let's create a for loop by writing for int i equals one, and then i is less than equal number of icons, and then i plus plus. Then let's create a clone of our icon prefab by writing game object icon equals instantiate, and in parentheses write level icon, and then set it as a game object. Next, let's set the parent of our icon to our panel object, but just like our panel clone, we need to first set the parent of the canvas object. So let's write icon.transform.setParent and then parentheses put this canvas.transform and put false for the second parameter. Then right below it put icon.transform.setParent and in parentheses put parent object. And then lastly, to stay organized, let's just give this object a name by writing icon.name equals level plus i. Now if we go back to our load panels function inside our for loop, we define load icons. Let's pass an amount of icons. For now, I'm just going to type in 25. And for the second parameter, I'm going to put panel so that our icons are added as children to the page it belongs to. Now if we go back into Unity and press play, we will see that all of our icons are just placed in the center of the screen, overlapping each other. The reason for this is because we haven't added a grid layout yet. So let's go back into our editor and do that. Right below our load panels function, let's create a function by writing void, setup grid, and for a parameter, let's pass a game object called panel. Now in order to add a layout component, we need to include the UI library. So up at the top, let's type using unity engine.ui. And then back in our function, let's write panel.add component grid layout group. Then back in our load panels function, right above our load icons line, let's define our function. So let's write setup grid 
and in parentheses write panel. Now when we go back into Unity and press play, our icons should all be spaced out accordingly. Awesome, now let's polish this thing up a little bit. Back in our editor, let's apply some settings to the grid layout group. Firstly, let's create a reference for our grid layout group by writing grid layout group before our add component line, and then let's label this grid. Then let's define our cell size to the dimensions of our icon. We can do this by writing grid.cellSize equals new vector two, and let's put icon dimensions that width and icon dimensions that height for the X and Y parameters. Again, we define this in our star function, so let's just make this variable global by defining it above. Then let's define our child alignment by writing grid.childalignment equals text anchor dot middle center. This makes our icon centered inside our panel, but feel free to adjust this setting for your project. Next, let's define exactly how many icons are needed for each panel. So right above our load icons function, let's write int number of icons equals amount per page. Again, we define this above, so let's make it a global variable. And then real quick, let's replace the number 25 with number of icons. But the problem with this is that if we have 40 levels and 25 levels fit on the page, then our second page will populate too many icons. So let's create another global variable to keep track of how many icons there currently are. At the top, let's write private int current level count. Then in our load icons function inside our for loop, let's increment this number by writing current level count plus plus. Then we can use this number to calculate how many icons we need to clone on our last page. For this, I'm going to use a shorthand statement by writing I with a double equal sign and then number of panels. And then I'm going to write a question mark to indicate if this is true. And then I'm going to put number of levels minus current level count. And then I'll use a semicolon for my else statement, which I'll leave as amount per page. The single line of code basically says if the value of I equals the same value as number of panels, which would mean it's on our last page, then use this first value. But if it's not, use this last value. So then if we play this in Unity, we should see two pages, each populated with the perfect amount of icons. Now the only thing left to do is to set up a script that lets us swipe between these pages. Luckily I covered how to do this in our last video. A link for that video can be found in the description below. As you can see, this file already exists in my project window and it's called page swiper. So to add the script to make it work with our panel, we just need to attach it to our level holder game object. So back in our editor under load panels function, let's do this with a single line of code. Go ahead and write level holder dot add component page swiper. And now if we drag our mouse, we can easily swipe between panels. Now it's up to you to customize this further for what you need, but let me show you a couple of customizations to make this work even nicer for your project. The first thing we want to do is update our icons to show the level number. In order to do this, it involves updating my text mesh pro text. So firstly, I need to include the library at the top by writing using TM pro. Then in my load icons function, I can write icon.getComponent in children, and I'll use text mesh pro U G U I, and then a function called set text. And in parentheses, I'm just going to write level plus current level count. Now we can see that all of our level numbers are populated in unity. And now the next customization we can add is spacing between our icons. Our grid layout group has a feature for cell spacing. So let's add a parameter for that. Back in our editor at the top, let's define a public vector two called icon spacing. We will define this value in the inspector, but for now let's apply it to our code. The first thing we wanna do is add this value to our setup grid functions. So inside that write grid.spacing and set it equal to icon spacing. But since this adds spacing to our icons, we want to include this value in our calculation that detects how many icons we could fit in a row and in a column. So let's go ahead and add icon spacing.x to our widths, and then also add icon spacing.y to our heights. And then go ahead and wrap these equations in parentheses because we want them to occur before these values are divided. And now if we go back into Unity, we should see a place for this in our inspector. Let's just go ahead and give it a value of 20 for both x and y, and then let's press play. And as you can see, this new spacing makes our icons look a lot nicer. But before I end this video, I wanna do one last thing. Notice if we were swiping between panels, we can see the last and also the first page. But we can fix this pretty easily with a couple lines of code. So go ahead and open up the page swiper script. At the top, we wanted to find two new integers to manage our page count. For the first, let's write public int total pages equals one. And for the second, let's write private int current page equals one. And then down in our on and drag function, we have an if statement that detects which direction we are swiping. The top if statement checks if we were swiping in the left direction, which would load the second page. So let's go ahead and add to the statement by writing two ampersands and then current page is less than total pages. This makes sure we don't load any more pages if we are on our last page. 
Then let's do this again for the second if statement by writing two ampersands and then current page is greater than one. Next, we just need to keep track of which page we are on. So in the first if statement, let's increment current page with two plus signs. And let's do the opposite in our second if statement by writing current page with two minus symbols. And the last thing we need to do before the script is complete is to find the total amount of pages, which is defined in our last script with our number of panels variable. So since total pages is a public variable, let's define it in our last script. Now under where we add the script as a component, let's just give the script a reference name by writing page swiper, and then let's just call this swiper. And then immediately below it, just put swiper.totalPages equals number of panels. And there you have it. You now have a full script that you can use to manage your levels. There was a lot of code covered in this video, so to save time, feel free to copy and paste everything at our website, pressstart.bip. And if you want to download this project, including all the artwork that was used, become a member on our Patreon. This month, I'd like to thank Ray Butler, Tim Webster, Graceful Code, and Robert Boyvin for their contributions.